Over these last days, the phone calls and emails and meetings have for the most part come down to one question. And that question is, why me? And there's a story that comes to mind, a great story from the Rumi's Mathnawi that's been told before. So let's see how the story relates to the question, why me? But just as a little aside, some years ago, in visiting a naturopath, the receptionist was a very chatty being. In the time in between, we got talking about life. And then she looked at me and she said, what you need is a good man. <laughs> so I looked at her and said, too late, I'm already married to God. <laughs> so she turned around and got very busy with her vitamin pills all of a sudden. <laughs> that story is the story about a very great king. And he followed and he had his kingdom follow the Sufi way. Whatever that is, and perhaps we know of this deep in our hearts. But one day, or uh, one night, uh, this king went to bed and he had a terrible nightmare. He dreamt that his only and beloved son died. He woke up from his sleep in a very great panic and his mind immediately went to all that could happen if his son left him. There would be no heir to his lineage. The love that he felt for his son would leave him bereft, empty. And so his mind went on and on until he thought to himself, well, the, 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 the only thing I can do is, is, is to marry off my son to ensure that we have an heir uh, to our lineage. That's what I'll do. I'll look for a bride for my son. And so he went about the business of finding a suitable a woman and he did not want one of these empty-headed, uh, um, self-centered uh, princesses. He was looking for some uh, simple, beautiful maiden. And in fact, he did find one. She was the daughter of a, a great sage, a great Sufi sage. So uh, the wedding was arranged, the marriage was arranged. But uh, aside from that, down in the town, just off uh, the main thoroughfare, there lived an old hag <coughs> by the name of Alicia. She was ancient and decrepit, toothless, breasts sagging under her chador so on, we can get the picture. But it so happened that Alicia, although in her life she had had many lovers, she had never known and experienced love. But as it happened, the longing that she still had in her antiquity was pointed at the son of the king. Taufik was his name. Now Taufik, being brought up in the Sufi way, when he passed down the thoroughfare on his horse, he would often see this hag on the side of the road. She would stand there being coquettish, trying to get his attention. 
and he would glance at her. But being one-pointed in what it was that he was uh, there to do, living intensely in the moments, he passed her by without a second thought. But Alicia's lust and longing for what he represented possessed her. So she would put coal on her eyelids, she would pimp herself up with makeup and so forth to try to make herself beautiful and alluring for him. But of course it never happened and she got desperate. So she heard that the, the sacred book had certain powers, so she cut out little pieces of it and stuck it on her face and on her... But of course it wouldn't stay and it didn't work anyway. So in her desperation, she went to Satan, Iblis, to try to give her a potion that would make her young and beautiful and alluring to the prince. But of course, Iblis didn't have any time for this ancient hag neither, and though she harangued and harassed him, he even got to the stage where he himself was waxing lyrical about spirituality. Why don't you turn inward and find the beauty of yourself in your heart? And then you won't even have a thought for your decrepit body. But she kept at him and at him until finally, of course, we know Satan doesn't have the power to bring youth and beauty back, but he did finally give her a potion, a powder in fact, that he said that she could use to allure the prince. Well, it so happened that Prince Tariq was on his way to fetch his bride. So riding his horse down the thoroughfare, at this particular time, his mind was on his bride. Was she as beautiful as he hoped that she would be, etc., etc. So when he came to the place where Alicia was standing with her little sachet of powder, he was in that state that we all have experienced. And so when she tossed the powder at him, all of a sudden, when he looked at her, he saw the most beautiful woman he had ever encountered. Everything looked sparkling and shiny, particularly her. She looked so beautiful. He could not resist. He got down off his horse and fell on his knees in front of her. And from that moment on, she, he was her slave. He loved her. He served her. Now, of course, his father, the king, and his lovely bride-to-be were waiting for him, and he didn't arrive. <coughs> they waited and waited. And then, of course, the king had to return to his palace, and he found out what had happened. He was beside himself, but he could do nothing. He could not convince his son of what it was that was going on with him. And Prince Tariq spent wonderful days and nights with his beloved hag, to him the most beautiful being on all of the earth. But the king, of course, being beside himself, spent days and nights calling on all of the soothsayers 
and everyone that he could think of to try to break this spell. He grew thin and wan, sleepless nights tossing back and forth. And then suddenly, one day, in one moment, he realized what he had been doing. It was not his son who was erring, but he himself. So he said, he went back, you might say, to following the Sufi way, whatever that is. And in that moment, as his gaze was fixed inward, an amazing thing happened. Out of the distance he could see a cloud forming and it came closer and closer and to his vision it became a great being of light. It was in fact one of the great heavenly magicians now, what it was that the great unearthly celestial being, we might call it, magician, did to break the spell that had been cast on Alicia's lover, Tafi, and how this great being, this great magician, was able to put paid to the ways of Satan or Iblis is another story. But suffice it to say that in that moment the spell on Taufik was broken and suddenly he looked at the old hag Alicia and saw her for what she was, still with pieces of the sacred book stuck onto her face, toothless, and so on. But in looking at her, in gazing at her, Alicia felt love such as she had never known before. Deep in her heart she felt embraced and loved. Taufi took leave of Alicia and going back to the palace carrying with him his sword and a shroud he knelt before his father and said, Father, I am unworthy. Kill me, I have heard. His father, with tears flowing down his face, said, No, my son, it is I who have heard. So he raised up his son, and Taufik said, Father, I have been seduced by the witch. And his father said, Oh, my son, that seduction is not the witch, but life. Come, and taking his son's hand, they went off to be wedded, as had been arranged. 
finding his bride. Tawfiq ends our story like all of these stories end. They married and had many sons. <laughs> How, in your deepest being, does this story relate to the question, why me? In whatever form that question takes, How many times did you ask the question, why me? Have you had your answer here? What does this story have to do with the question, why me? What is it that puts paid to any possibility that we can be seduced? By life and what life contains.